Hey guys, this is a nerd vlog for the nerds, the coders out there. If you're a beginner, this might be useful to you. So we had an issue recently with Studio Web 4. It's in con continuous development as we roll out new features. And we had moved Studio Web to a new server two, two years ago, I guess it is, two and a half years ago, something like that. And it's a virtual private server and it's a managed server. So it's kind of a hybrid between traditional cloud services where you have a cloud-based system, but you have to manage all the packages and so forth. Whereas the uh, non-traditional VPS that I'm using now is cloud-based and you can have all the advantages of uh, unlimited scalability, well, almost, and all kinds of different configurations, et cetera, et cetera. But it's managed, so there's a few little limitations here and there, but you get these limitations at the advantage of having the system managed for you, all the patches applied for you, all the backups, and all that's done for you and automated. Why do I mention all that? Because when you're working with a new structure, whether it be a new server architecture or new programming language or new libraries, et cetera. There is this period, if you will, we'll call it the break-in period or the period where you as a developer are going to have to familiarize yourself. I don't know if I said that right, but you understand. You have to become familiar with uh, the nuances and, the, uh, and the, the little gotchas, if you will, in the platform, in the language, in the library, in the server technology. And this video was sponsored by the Node cloud hosting servers, high performance SSD Linux servers for all your infrastructure needs. Let me just read off some of the bullet points so you know what we're talking about here. Linode offers virtual servers that make any app site or service flexible and scalable. Simple pricing with a monthly cap starting at $5 ensures no hidden fees or surprisingly large bills. You can access your machine right from your computer's terminal or any web browser. Linode, once again, has live support 24-7, 365. They're always available day or night by phone or ticket. They even list their number on their website, which not a lot of companies do. You can get help from a qualified expert in minutes should anything go wrong with your servers. So we put out a new service specifically targeting larger districts that use Studio Web. Uh, has to do with classroom creation and classroom management tools and so forth. And things are automated, running on crons, server crons. Crons are just tasks that you can schedule. It's like scheduled task in Windows, and you can put it on your server. So we have certain tasks, certain things are being monitored, and processes are going. Um, so we ran into a problem where my lead developer contacted me and said, okay, we got problems where we're throwing all these errors. I'm not sure why. The code's clean. It just started throwing errors in the last month or so. And then we noticed, we started seeing uh, dropped requests to the database as well for reasons we could not identify. And of course, when we're looking at all the error messages, we have automated tracking of all our errors, reports coming in. And you look at it and you go, you know, that's really, you look at the error messages, and the answer was actually right there in front of us, interesting. We're seeing how uh, it was saying out of memory exceptions. That was one of the errors. So essentially, the error message was telling me exactly what was going on. The server wasn't able to find memory to be able to uh, do its process. And I was wondering, well, how could it not find memory? It's such a small process, right? So I log into the system, and I saw that the process stack, the queue, was was at 98%. I was like, how could that be? So I said, do we have like a problem with uh, the main app? Is the main app uh, hitting the database too much? Are connections being closed? Uh, or are you doing explicit connection closing? All these type of things that you would look for in terms of uh, when you start seeing this kind of memory issue occur. But the lead developer was telling me, you know, we haven't done anything in terms of that aspect of the application. We haven't changed anything. It shouldn't happen. So, because it was a new VPS, a new, a new uh, private server, uh, virtual private server, excuse me, VPS, 
I, I wasn't familiar with the way it operated. So I went in there looking around. I couldn't find I couldn't find specifics in terms of the processes. I didn't know what was what was what was being locked up in Q. So anyway, so long story short, I emailed uh, well, emailed. I sent a, a support request to the server admins, and uh, they came back to me uh, in a short time, and they said, ah, "We just we restarted uh, Apache. We restarted the database server." I was like. Pfft. And it was such a simple thing. One of the secrets, <laughs> I laugh because it's, it's kind of funny, but one of the things you have to do as somebody who's managing a SaaS over the long term, a SaaS software as a service, whether it be Apache, whether it be a database servers like MySQL or Postgre, whatever it is you're running, Linux, at some point, a restart is going to be required. And in fact, in very large organizations, they do this as a matter of protocol on a regular basis, depending on the business, depending on the level of load that they have. Even very mature applications like the Apache web server, like MySQL, uh, like Windows server, etc. At some point, there's going to be little memory leaks. At some points, uh, certain things won't be cleared. That's the memory leaks. So when I logged into the control panel on the server on the VPS, I said clearly, it was like the process stack, the queue, was piled full of stuff. And uh, so the server admin just restarted, and Bob's your uncle. All the problems disappeared. No more errors, no more errors. Everything is working perfectly fine. And then I realized, um, yeah, we hadn't restarted any of the services in a couple of years. And that's what did it. In time, even with refined software, you're going to have to do the old restart. And I was chuckling before because one of the old jokes about uh, system management is uh, restart, restart. A lot of times, you just hit little glitches and you just have to restart and it clears the thing and away you go. And that was one of the concerns, actually. One of the reasons I had, uh, we rebuilt Studio Web from scratch, that's Studio Web 4, is because we wanted to create a much more efficient system, a piece of software, a much more efficient SaaS. And because I knew the use case really well, I was able to architect the database, and we were able to architect the database and the app layer, et cetera, use brand new ORMs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we had a much more efficient system that would allow us to scale much larger than the previous version could. And I was, uh, in the last several months, I was noticing it wasn't, it wasn't a, a critical slowdown, but it wasn't as zippy. And as I mentioned before, you know, you get caught up in the day-to-days of managing the business and working on new features, and you see this, this creeping clogging of your app server, uh, the clogging up of resources, meaning memory leaks. And um, that's it. So with the restart, we cleared out the whole pipeline and the, and the system is flying. It's flying nice and quick. So there you go. Sometimes you have to restart your servers. Sometimes that will solve a lot of problems because even in mature software like Apache, and like MySQL, et cetera, there will be little tiny problems that over a couple of years could build into problems that will slow down your entire system. So there you go. So if you do log into Studio Web 4, you probably didn't notice a speed difference because it was still pretty fast, even though the, the server resources were being sucked up by uh, the memory leaks. Um, now it's going to be significantly faster. All right. I hope you found this video useful. This is a little bit down deep into uh, more uh, experiential nerd discussions here. Uh, that's all I like to bring to the table. I want to bring uh, more real world, you know long-term app management issues here. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Once again, this video was sponsored by the Node Cloud Hosting Servers, high-performance SSD Linux servers for all your infrastructure needs. Let me just read off some of our bullet points so you know what we're talking about here. Linode offers virtual servers that make any app site or service flexible and scalable. Simple pricing with a monthly cap starting at $5 ensures no hidden fees or surprisingly large bills. You can access your machine right from your computer's terminal or any web browser. 
Linode, once again, has live support 24-7, 365. They're always available day or night by phone or ticket. They even list their number on their website, which not a lot of companies do. You can get help from a qualified expert in minutes should anything go wrong with your servers. One of the top things I suggest that people look at when they're evaluating any hosting companies is to check out their support. That's such a huge thing. If something should go wrong, you really need a good, strong support system that your host can provide to make your life easy. Trust me, it can be a lifesaver. Once again, check out Lenovo. They are the sponsor for this video. All right, we'll see you in the next one.